are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, so I've got a few basic questions I would which have... you can expand on. Okay. And I'm just ready to jump right into it if you are. Let's do it. Okay, so the idea that the Earth is flat has been around for a while, but it seems it's only been in recent years it's been so much more prominent. Why do you think that might be? Uh, when this thing kind of uh, came back around was the beginning of 2015, end of, end of 2014, beginning of 2015. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a little frog in my throat. The, I, I think it mostly happened because... A whole bunch of new wrinkles were introduced to an old concept. Uh, the the biggest of which was that we took advantage of social media, and I, I, I I'm going to take some credit for this. That <laughs> the the first dummies guide for flat Earth was created. Up until now, everything had been there. There was a lot of math and a lot of physics and a lot of geometry. And I wanted to boil it down to something that I could take to just about anybody on the street and at least put it in their head in under two minutes. And I, I did just that with the Flat Earth Clues. I created a, a series of clues which have almost no math in them whatsoever. And so anyway, sorry to, to take the long version around to try to answer your question. It resonated because... It's easy to understand. The general mm -hmm. concept is easy to understand. It's a simple term. I mean, it's two words that you've heard pretty much your entire life. In fact, I, I made a video recently and I, I started, I kind of chuckled when I, when I made it because I realized that out of all the people that have been exposed to Flat Earth, I don't think I've run into a single person that has said, Flat Earth, what's that? You know, every, everybody's heard of it. We, if you compare that with just about any of the cons other conspiracy, there's lots of people who don't even know other conspiracies are a thing. And this, everybody knows. It, it resonates back to your childhood. So that's, hopefully that kind of helps. Yeah. So it's just about making it accessible, really, for everyday people. Yeah, yeah. People. It, it, the, it, it, I, there was something I've been coming up recently, which is the, the war on science has just about finished its third year. And you can look this up. All you have to do is type in War on Science National Geographic. They started it. We didn't. But the first thing you would do in this case is create a whole bunch of content and put it online and make it easy for people to access it. And we did. We created a massive amount of content. And then the second thing would be to, second part would be to get the media to create sort of their own vocabulary around it so we say flat earth enough times and then they create variations of it you know flat earthers anti-globalists mm -hmm. blah 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 and then the third part is just resistance which is wait for the science to come back on us and and hold holds about as strong as we can and, and we've been doing a, a great job at it okay so if somehow you sort of had undeniable proof that the earth is flat and everyone believed it all of a sudden yeah what would change what would happen in society then why is it such a big deal uh it's a big deal because it goes back so far and and i talked about this in the clues because one out of every 10 people ask that question which is mm -hmm. why why would it matter who cares you know i still have to go to my crappy job in the morning my kids aren't going to listen to me my wife hates me or husband whoever uh what what does it matter that's like well it doesn't matter to you. In fact, you and I right now talking, it may not matter to mm -hmm. you right now until you start believing it. The second you start believing it, even in the smallest fraction of it, uh, you will start to act differently, meaning it's kind of like telling somebody, and I don't know how old you are, the picture I'm looking at, you look really young. <laughs> you look you're like, like 24 in that picture. The, um, 25. <laughs> well, in that picture? Oh, perfect. The um, uh, it, It's kind of like telling somebody when they're 30 that they're adopted and they've never heard the term before. Mm -hmm. and, and because it was like, I, you don't believe it. So why does it matter? It's like, well, you, in fact, you might even use it. It's like, I wouldn't even care if I was adopted. It's like, yeah, you can say that until all of a sudden it starts creeping in around the edges. 
And then once that happens, then you start revisiting every conversation you've ever had with your parents going back to when you were six, five years old. So mm. when it comes to this, though, it would change. Everybody around you would act differently, regardless. It's 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 hypocritical. It, it's no one would lots of people would say oh no it's not going to affect me but there'd be nothing you could do to, to fight it because all of a sudden you realize okay wait first we're not on a globe anymore which means you'd have to revisit just about every scientific principle that's ever been put forward in the last 500 years and two the the really really big one we won't go into like the potential economic meltdown or how governments would act very very differently towards each other or anything like that think of it from a spiritual standpoint which is okay that means you've never been alone in the universe which means this place was built and if that's the case and i don't care what your definition of god is you, you, you could be any any one of the big five religions whatever whatever your denomination is though you're all going to think the same thing which is okay some higher power than us built this which means there may have been something somebody looking over our shoulder the entire time which means are you going to act the same way you know kind of like uh the the santa claus argument so, you know, the naughty and nice list i'm sure you've heard of it mm -hmm. no, no who cares right it doesn't make any difference until you see Santa Claus in your living room eating cookies. Once you see that, then the naughty and nice, nice, wow, naughty and nice list becomes very, very real. And then what do you do? Do you still do the same things? Do you still do bad things? I, I will never do a malicious thing to anyone ever again. And I'm just one person. And I know maybe I'm open-minded and a little naive to say that. But it's true. I, I can't. How can I? Not if, not if I know there's a scorecard involved. Not if I know it's real. I, I treat it the same way as I do. I don't know if the, they have uh, the cameras on the traffic lights over where you are, but I treat it the same mm -hmm. way. Which is people. I, I've watched it in in in, in towns in, I was in living in. I was living in. You got a little feedback. Got a little feedback. The uh, yeah. where there was a stoplight yeah, stop and light. people would blow through stoplights i've seen it happen all the time and then you would put a camera on that intersection nobody goes through the stoplight why not well because there's a chance we're gonna get caught because there's a camera there well then why were you thinking about running the stoplight in the first place so hey anyway, sorry i get i get all, <laughs> no, if okay. i if i go off into the toolies please stop me <laughs> okay so um what are people's reactions then when you tell them what you do and what you believe would you even tell people straight away or is it something that no no you do not tell people straight <laughs> away oh my god if you want and you want to have any sense of family and and friends and anything like that it is in fact it's something i came up with early early on because i'm a huge movie fan uh, i was a big fan of the uh the 1999 movie fight club and mm -hmm. that is the first rule of flat club is that you do not talk about flat club you know, you do, you just size people up. You do not, especially, you really got to know your audience. If, if the mm. person you're talking to isn't into conspiracies at all, you probably don't want to open with this. It's, it's a bad, bad idea because it's jarring. I literally, it's, it, because it, it sends ripples in time back through your psyche. You know, you, you tell people this and you know, the five stages of grief, right? Uh, denial, mm -hmm. uh, anger, uh, bargaining depression and acceptance and people go into that denial and anger so quickly and so you the the kind of the litmus test for people is to ask them if they believe in the moon mission start small if you can if the moon mission conspiracy is is small i mean that's where you start because if they absolutely believe the americans went to the moon then you know you might want to back off a bit and, and see what you can do there uh, but the reactions are always the same. Uh, denial, anger. Same thing with me. I mean, nobody, nobody started out in Flat Earth thinking it was a great idea. Nobody w you know, wakes up and, and gets into Flat Earth and says, oh my God, this is the best thing since sliced bread. I've got to tell everybody. But at the same time, it, it varies. It really, really varies in the amount of time it takes for someone to to resolve it in their head. I've seen people, I mean, myself, it took me months because I had a lot less material to work with. I, but your average person take about two to three weeks. But I've <laughs> seen, and the most open-minded people who are women, of course, uh, 
they uh, the the quickest person I ever th- saw in that regards was a woman in California who was an Uber driver driving one of our members to an event and in the 20 minutes it took her to drive them they were talking about it the entire time she just pulled her car over in front of the event got out and became part of the event and then came to me and and uh i i we, we talked briefly and, and i go so how long you been in she goes what time is it now and i go what are you kidding me so it really really varies uh but yeah your average response everyone at the beginning hates it hates it hates it hates it which should show you the power of how well it resonates you hate it but then there's something it it kind of it creates sort of a tickling in the back of your head where you can't resolve it as like a marble in a paint can type thing you you can't get rid of it and you don't know what to do and then finally so either you have to eventually just ignore it or you move forward and come up with your own conclusions and most people say the same thing it's like they'll they'll say probably say the same thing that i do which is i may not be able to tell you the exact shape of the earth but but i cannot i in the in a court of law i can't prove the globe anymore i can't do it so okay so well you might say someone who believes it is open-minded i think it would be fair to say a lot of people would say it's not open-minded it's crazy how does how do you go about presenting yourself as a flat earther knowing this is the reaction you're going to get from people uh, as a community? There was something I came up with later. Well, I shouldn't say later on um, after the clues, which was really, I really focused on, which was do your, don't believe a thing I say that in fact, anyone you, you know, that would be listening to this, I'd say, you know, don't, don't believe anything don't you know, don't take my word for it i i'm just telling you how i got from point a to point b you really got to do your own research as far as the open mindedness side goes it's it's very very strange that you can bring this up to a conspiracy person you know severe conspiracy pre- people that that believe they're paranoid about the government think that you know there's lizard people running around and that everything is a conspiracy and yet i could go to them and say oh yeah i got something for you i, I kind of call it the flat earth drug deal which is you know oh you're into conspiracies man yeah i got something it's, it's flat earth i don't i don't give this to just anybody so, all right don't take too much of it you know and you didn't get it from me but and, and, they'll, and they'll look they'll get out of here no such thing and but it, but once you get through it once you go through the tunnel which is flat earth or the rabbit hole or whatever you want to call it when you get on the other side you're completely open-minded at, at that point and I'm, I'm not talking about a zen-like enlightenment where you're seeing or you're tasting colors and stuff like that you're you're really really uh um, open to just about any concept. In fact, you can't judge other people when it comes to conspiracies. So beforehand, you know, somebody, somebody would come up to me and said, "Oh yeah, by the way, I, uh, I, I, I pretty much got proof that Elvis Presley had Bigfoot's baby." And and before I'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever you're taking, you know, change the change the dosage." And now I'd be like, "You know what? I'll give you a couple minutes. Why not?" Wait, 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 you know, I may I may not agree with him but I won't shut it down like, like mm-hmm. I used to. I won't shut down. I've looked at conspiracies now that I never, never would have entertained beforehand. And it's, so yeah, it's really, it's, it's really strange. It's, it's the ultimate open-minded test. If you can get through it, if you can, if you can go through the tunnel and make it on the other side, uh, then I would absolutely consider you, a, you know, a, a very open-minded individual for for getting that far but it's 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 a journey that's for sure okay so what do you think about flat earthers like i believe his name's daryl marble is it who took the spirit level on the flight oh right yeah daryl i've Um, i've I've, I've met daryl oh right well experiments like that do you think if more everyday people did little things like that maybe it would be perhaps more widely accepted uh Every little bit helps. I've seen some experiments that did really what that resonate. It's all about resonating, meaning what what does the average person on the street gravitate towards? And when it came to D. Marble's experiment, even though he just got roasted, and I know people, young kids mm-hmm. like you say roasted, they used to say burned. I don't know why roasted replaced burned. 
but whatever. The think of it think of it this way. The amount of press that was generated from that one little experiment that he did was I mean it launched him into uh you know uh, up the ranks in in the flat earth community to where he all of a sudden became the opening speaker down at the flat earth convention in in Raleigh North Carolina uh mm-hmm. when we had a last minute uh dropout so it, it was it was great for him but the press is invaluable kind of, kind of like that that rocket man uh, mad mike uh, down in mm-hmm. uh, outside of Los Angeles he never even launched and just about every major media publication covered the story twice what you know once when he, you know when he was initially going to do it and then it was delayed and once the, and then the second time when he when he came back out to the desert and he still didn't launch and and now i i think he'll probably do it, the whole crying wolf syndrome will probably take over no one probably not going to listen to him anymore cuz i don't think he's ever going to launch but if more people did experiments, yes, sure. But there's lots of people doing great, great experiments. And for me, the reward is somebody not necessarily following another person's lead. So yeah, if a whole bunch of people took spirit levels on a plane, I suppose that'd be kind of cool. Uh, but for me, it's it wouldn't be as interesting as the people that come up with a, one person in the middle of nowhere at three o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden having a, having a revelation saying, hey, what if we tried this? Hey, what if we tried this? You know, like, for example, uh, a guy who called me on my radio show back at the end of 2015, where and i'd already been into flat earth you know for the better part of the clues were made in february so let's say 10 months or nine months and he said yeah by the way did you know that the moonlight is cold and, she, and honestly and i'm going i'm going get out of here we what are you talking about the moonlight's cold you know because in people don't understand because it's never been described before how do you tell that to somebody and people say well we all we all know it's cold at night it's like no 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 man the moon is generating a cold light I'm going, really? Okay. So I, you know, and it was, and the thing is, it's easy to test. And I, you know, I found out a little bit more about it and I, I started doing some tests and I'll be darned if the guy wasn't spot on and that thing spread and it resonated really, really quickly. It only took one guy to, to, to look into something and apply it to flat earth. And then it just started jumping around to where now it's one of my five major scientific points that I bring up, you know, because eventually we have to address science head on and they like stuff where they can actually dig in with some physics or some math. And yeah, it was just one guy that did it. So yeah, I, I mean, I love D Marble, what he did, but I love more that one, there, there's your example. One guy resonated with a whole bunch of people and gave us immense amount of exposure to where so yeah i mean if other people want to replicate it, that's fine but it doesn't help us as much as somebody else coming up thinking outside the box and coming up with something new there you go okay um so if you had to convince someone the earth is flat in maybe two sentences how would you go about that two sentences all right boy it's tough <laughs> tough 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 um All right, I would do something like this. If it was in two sentences, and it was not, they're not going to be super short sentences, I would say one, I, I would use my two big points in the scientific world, which was, you know what, I, I'll mix it up. I'll mix it up. Um, one would be, how do you see the curvature of the, if, if the, let me change that. Let me change that. Sorry. This first person, your first person actually asked me that to do it in two sentences. It's really quick. I mean, normally they give me like a minute or two or something. Uh, I was like, can you do it in two minutes? Yeah, I can. Uh, but two sentences. Okay. I'd shorten it down to this. The curvature of the earth is eight inches per mile squared. Tell me where you <laughs> see it. That'd be the first thing I'd, I'd say to somebody. I, it's, I'd, I'd throw questions at them. I'm not going to give them a statement because the statement's not going to do me any good because they're going to brace against it. So I'd ask them two questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you know, the, the, the curvature of the Earth is eight inches per mile, eight inches per mile squared. Tell me where you see it. And the second one, which is the one I came up with, which is fairly original, is: Are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no. That would be the other question, because 
the the Van Allen question, they're going to get stuck in a loop and they're never going to get out of it. That's that's the question I'm actually waiting for an astronaut to uh, to let me ask, and they're never going to. It's never going to happen. Do you know about the Van Allen? Should, can I explain no, the Van Allen thing? No, I haven't heard about it. Okay, so the Van Allen radiation belt announced in 1959 by mm -hmm. NASA employee Van Allen, supposedly thousands of miles donut shaped. Uh, thickness of deadly, deadly radiation, never ever supposed to go up there. And yet Apollo, the Americans, supposedly punched through it, was it six times, seven times? I can't, I, I keep losing count. Uh, Apollo 9 through Apollo 17, going through the Van Allen radiation belts, uh, round trips. Nobody died, nobody got radiation poisoning, nobody even got cancer from these radiation belts. So... The question is, you know, are the radiation belts deadly? Well, Van Allen said they were deadly. So what shielding did the the Americans use? They didn't use any shielding. The, the, there's only two metals, common metals, that you can stop radiation. One use the dentist's office, which is uh, lead. The other is gold, which is twice as dense as lead. And the, the Americans didn't use either of those things. They just used aluminum and plastic. And Van Allen, when he asked later, he said, oh, yeah, well, we, we just went through it really, really fast. So here's where the trap question comes in. So you ask him, it's like, are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no? If you say N yes, then you say, okay, what shielding did the Americans use? If you say no, they aren't deadly, then you point them back to a NASA video that was made at the end of 2014. You can, just, you can go up there, look at it. It's not a secret. Just type in uh, a Ryan trial by fire video which is uh, mm -hmm. the Americans video that, they, that NASA made. It's on, on NASA.gov right now, where they are very specific about say, stating that the Van Allen belts are so deadly that their capsules, the new the, the Mars program, they're going to test capsules without people because they haven't, they haven't solved the radiation problem. And that kind of should make you scratch your head because it doesn't sound right. It's like, what do you mean? Solve the radiation problem. You you already solved it a whole bunch of times in the 1960s. What what's there left to to solve here? And they I don't know why they made the video. I don't know if it was a mistake, but it's uh it's it's very uh I shouldn't say the word incriminating. It's it's a paradox that, that you can't have it both ways. You can't say they're deadly. And they're not deadly in in the same era, so there you go. How's that? Okay, that's I, brilliant. I, I think I, that's about everything. Unless there's anything you want to add, uh, I don't know. Is there is there any side questions? Any? How'd you get into this? How how'd you how'd you find me? <laughs> to be honest, lots of research. <laughs> I've watched a lot of videos. And uh, are, are you going to do that? You know, I don't know anything about you other than I see you drinking a beer. Where are, <laughs> are you? You don't sell. Are you out of? Oh boy, I'm going to embarrass myself if I screw this up. Out of Scotland? No. Part, what part of England? You know Liverpool? The Beatles? But I am aware of the Beatles, yes. <laughs> right there. Oh, really? Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's all we're known for. <laughs> do you uh, are you going to do anything fun with this, or are you just kind of? Um, hopefully it'll be on the Voice of London oh, website. Neat. Neat. Mm -hmm. neat. That's cool. Yeah. Um, did you did you want the audio for this, or are you just kind of taking notes? Or are you recording from your side? Or... Um, I'm recording, but a backup might be useful. <laughs> okay, I I it looks like everything's recording on this side, so it should be fine.